In this video, you'll learn about a few different document collection tools that you can use to streamline the process of collecting documents from clients. If you've ever needed to request clients to send you documents before, you'll know how painful it can be. Most people start with email. It seems pretty logical because most people know how to use email, so it would make sense that your clients also know how to use email and will be able to send you everything you need. But the fun of email ends pretty quickly when your client replies with 15 different emails with one attachment each and half of them end up being the wrong document. They've sent you uh, the wrong thing. Somehow you have to try and manage the process of working out which documents they've actually sent so far, which ones you need them to resend and you need to tell them where to get those the right documents uh, to replace the, the wrong ones. Uh, you know, and suddenly you've got multiple email threads going just for one client. You multiply this by how many clients you have and it gets to be a mess really quickly. <laughs> and and this is all probably best case scenario. The worst case is that they, they just don't reply to you and your emails go unanswered, which is probably far more common. You know, clients just not responding with the documents that you need. So yeah, in this video, I'd like to show you some ways that you can streamline this process to make it easier to get documents from your clients. And I am going to start with email. I know I've just kind of ripped on it a bunch, um, but if you are adamant about going down the email route and you know it is kind of free and you know how to use it already. So, uh, you know, some people like to stick with it, um, but you know, there are a few ways you can make it a bit better if you're going to stick with email. So one of the simplest ways is just to create a spreadsheet that kind of operates like a checklist for yourself. So as emails come in from your client, you can just mark them off here, you know, using an X or a Y, whatever you like, uh, just so you know that you've got each document and you know which ones you need to chase them up for. Depending on what uh, document storage system you're using, something like Dropbox or Google Drive, you can just put the link in here to each file as you upload it. So you at least have a quick reference to all of the files you've got from your client. And the second tip with email is when you're going to email clients to request an update, you know, to request different files, try and put them all together in one email because this just prevents spawning off multiple different email threads. You know, if they make a mistake in sending you bank statements, they haven't sent the right account or something, and you're still waiting on their certificate of insurance, just roll these all up into one email. So just to, you know, keep it a little bit, uh, more streamlined for you and your clients. It's a bit easier to keep track of when it's all uh, in one email rather than in different threads. Another good option is a forms tool. So this might be something like Google Forms or Typeform where it's just a bunch of fields uh, for your clients to fill out. So you can send them the link to a form and then they can you know, upload files to it. So a good free option is Google Forms. It generally doesn't look very good, but at least it's free and a simple way to get started. So what you would do here is you create a form uh, called, you know, whatever you want, new client document checklist, and then you can choose this file upload option here. Now, one thing to note with Google Forms is that respondents are required to sign into Google. So if some of your clients don't have Google accounts, this is probably not going to work for you, uh, but I would just, I'll, I'll recommend a couple of other forms tools in a minute. Uh, but yeah, so we continue there. And create a form so you know might have those same things we're asking for there so a passport uh, then we add another question uh, turn it into file upload again uh, and then we've got a driver's license right uh, but let's say uh, we've sent that to a client now so we generate the link might do a shortened URL uh, and then this is something we can just send to our clients in an email or whatever and they get a form that looks like this right so they can upload their passport and select files from their device. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily the most user-friendly method, but it, it can work. I would recommend checking out something like maybe JotForm, where you can build forms in a, in a similar way, uh, and then go ahead and send these to your clients. It works the same way that you just send them a link and then they can go ahead and, and upload all of the things separately. And another option you might wanna check out is Typeform. So these, these options aren't free but they are probably a little bit better than Google Forms as far as user experience is concerned. So worth checking out. There are a couple of pretty serious 
problems with forms, however. So if I uh, go ahead and open this form from JotForm, this applies to all the forms tools, pretty much. So uh, let's say you had a big list of files here. I've only got two, but imagine this is like 10 documents long. If they have gone and found their passport and uploaded it, and you know they're doing their driver's license, they're doing their bank statements, they go through when they're several items through. If they close this window, that's gone forever. They cannot recover that work they've already done. And that can lead to some pretty unhappy, cranky clients at times. Uh, I've heard many stories um, of clients becoming very frustrated when they realize that the files they have previously uploaded are gone just because they closed the window. And this can happen for a lot of reasons, you know, like maybe they just close it by accident. Maybe something goes wrong on their computer or maybe they just got called away to do something else in the middle of it. So it's pretty reasonable to expect that this will happen to quite a lot of your clients. Uh, another couple of downsides are if they upload the wrong thing. So they upload a, you know, a passport that's blurry and you need to get them to re-upload one you basically have to resort to email. There aren't really any other options because you can't. You don't want them to submit the whole form again. You just want that one file. So you have to send an email to them and say, hey, please uh, re-upload your bank statement or your passport or whatever it is uh, and just send it here on email, right? And then you kind of back to that same problem of having multiple threads and trying to work out where each client is up to. And of course, the same problem, if your clients forget to fill it out completely, you still have to manually chase them up by email. There's not really any getting away from that. Instead, I'd like to show you a document collection tool that makes this whole process a lot easier. I'm one of the founders of Content Snare. We've built it to do exactly this process and to make it extremely easy for both you and your client. So let's have a look at how it works. You can see I've got a few requests out for information with my existing clients, but if we create a new document request here, I've created a template earlier, just called the new client document checklist. So I'm gonna open this one we get a preview. I'm just going to use it straight away so you can see what this looks like. It's pretty much exactly the same as building a form. So just like the other forms tools, you know, we ask for a passport, it's a file upload, and then we can include some instructions here about what we're expecting the client to upload, which is really important to get the right thing from your clients the first time. You know, it sounds a bit silly to have to say, please make sure the, the photo of your passport isn't blurry, but you might be surprised what clients will upload, or maybe not given you're watching this video, you've probably uh, experienced some weird and wonderful documents uh, received from clients before. So yeah, the instructions are really, really, really important. So we're asking here for a passport, we're asking for a driver's license, again, with a little example, another ID card. So this is just like building a form. Uh, and then we can ask for multi-file fields as well. So, you know, we're, if we're asking for utility statements as part of their proof of ID. So this first section, we've got proof of ID, we're asking for passport, license, ID, and utility statements, you know, specifying that it clearly shows their name and address, uh, but we're also allowing clients to upload multiple files here. And then we get into some other things like tax returns, um, you know, proof of income, I guess, and, and insurance certificates. You know, this is just an example. Of course, your document checklist is probably going to be different than this, uh, but all of these are just file uploads ready for our client. And I'll show you what this looks like uh, to the client. So the process of sending this to clients is a little bit different than a forms tool. Instead of just sending a link, we're actually going to send them an email directly from here. So I'm going to choose myself as a client. And one thing you'll notice immediately that's different than pretty much all the other tools is that Content Snare is going to automatically send email reminders to the client if they don't fill out everything that we need. So obviously we don't have to go and chase them up manually, which saves a ton of time. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but you can completely customize the words in every email and how often they go out uh, in the reminders menu up here. But this is just a default email schedule that I'm going to leave for now. So if I send this off, it's gone ahead and sent an email to myself, but it's also got a link here that we could send directly to the client or um, you know load up in the browser ourselves to see what it looks like. But let's just go and have a look at the email instead. This is what it looks like. Pretty simple. It just says, you know, we need this information from you and here's a button to access it. So your client can come in, click that button and they're directly into the system ready to stop uploading information. One step I skipped over is this front page 
When you're setting up your request, you can create a nice little front page here that explains what you need from your clients and how this system works. You know, you can see it says your progress is automatically saved. Make sure you click submit for review on every question. You can completely customize this. You can even get rid of it if you want. So the client jumps straight into the area where they upload documents, but I would recommend just giving them a little bit of an introduction here. So they would click this button and they're ready to go. So you can see we've got the instructions here of how to upload a passport. They can either click here to upload from their computer or they can just drag and drop in. So it uploads and when they're done, they just click submit for review and move on. I'm sure you get the point, so I'm not going to upload uh, every single document here, but this is what it looks like when you're requesting multiple files of the same type. So you can see this is where they upload the utility statements. It says upload two or three that clearly show your name and address. Again, instructions, super, super important. And same deal for individual tax returns, company tax returns. You can specify how many boxes you want to show here for them to be able to upload. And just like a form they go through, they can complete everything uh, and then they get to the end and they hit submit page for review, but they can also submit individual items at a time. Now, the really important thing, if they close that window and they come back later using a link uh, in that same email or one of the reminders that goes out, you'll notice that passport that we just uploaded before is still there. So they can resume exactly where they left off before, no matter what happens. As soon as they upload things, it's automatically saved. So nothing gets lost if they, for some reason, close the window or get called away. So let's have a quick look at what you'll see on your end. So now that that client has uploaded something, so I'm gonna go back to the request dashboard and we can see here, this has gone uh, into a colored card here because now uh, it means that our client has uploaded something. So they've uploaded one document, uh, it's ready for us to review. You don't have to review it until they've completed it all, but if you want, you can come in here and see what they have uploaded. So you might wanna download this and have a look at it and you can approve it. But more importantly, if they've uploaded the wrong document, you can reject it and say why. So we go ahead and reject that field. And now let's go and have a look at the email that the client would have received. Looks a bit like this. Uh, this one's provided on a plain email template, but you can make this look like the other one we had with a nice looking button or whatever. It's totally up to you. Uh, but yeah, it just says, look, we've reviewed some information um, and made some comments when you we need you to come back and change. So they click to access and they're straight back into uh, the request from where they were before. And they can see this really obvious yellow thing uh, telling them to re-upload. And the beauty of that is that it means there is not yet another email trail for you to try and go back and forth uh, with this client to try and get an updated document. And when you're done collecting everything from your client, you just click this export request button up here. And you can download everything they've sent you in several formats, like maybe you'd like a PDF. Uh, and what will actually happen is it will put all of the things they've uploaded into folders based on the different pages in your request. So in this one, we only have the one page, your documents. So it's gone ahead and created one folder here called your documents and that's where uh, any information they upload goes so you can see uh, their passport uh, is in there and that's where all their other documents would be so you can download everything in one go so yeah the end result is that you end up with this dashboard of all your client requests in one place all the documents you need and of course it's going to automatically chase up clients so that you don't have to that's everything i wanted to show you in this uh, video about how to collect documents from your clients those options again were one if you're going to use email make sure you use a spreadsheet or some kind of checklist so you know exactly uh, the status of every document you're waiting on from each client uh, if you're going to use a forms tool, keep it simple. Like these four, these tools work better if you are requesting a small number of documents, something you can reasonably expect your client to submit in one sitting, you know, because if they close that window, they're going to lose it all. And I've, I've seen many upset clients because of this. Uh, and then of course the last one content snare, which is going to automatically follow up clients for you and allow them to complete everything you need in multiple sittings. If you'd like to try Content Snare, there's a 14 day trial and I'll put a link in the video description below for you to get that trial, but it's just at contentsnare.com. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to learn more ways to automate your business and get more productive, hit that subscribe button as well. 
and I'll see you in the next video.